Lumex LX10 review after six months. What up YouTube, it's your boy Jermaine, back with another video, and in this video I'm gonna talk about this camera here, this Lumex LX10. Um, if you've been following my channel, you guys know that I love this camera, I use this camera quite a bit. I actually bought this camera in New York about six months ago. I bought this camera the first day it came out. Like, I was really obsessed with this camera. I really, really wanted this camera. Now, before I bought this camera, there were a few other cameras I was looking at. There's the Sony RX lineup of point-and-shoot vlogging cameras, and also Canon makes a, I think it's a G7 or a G7X or something like that. And I was thinking of, okay, should I get the G7X, or should I get one of the, one of the RX100, the Sony cameras, or should I just wait and or should I just wait for the new Lumex to come out and just get that one when I first heard about the LX10 I was thinking to myself we're gonna wait to November and we're gonna get the LX10 in November the reason why we're gonna wait and get the LX10 in November number one it has 4k number two if you're a vlogger this is extremely important it has a flip-up screen and number three you may not think that this one is like super important and before I had this camera I was using a Sony HX80 and I was totally cool with it because it did not have a touch screen on the back but this camera has a touch screen on the back and I really love the touch screen on the back. Once you start using a camera with touch screen on the back it's really hard to go back and use a camera with no touch screen on the back it's just kind of like oh there's no touch screen and that's one of the big drawbacks with the Sony RX lineup they're not touch screen and one drawback with the Canon G7X lineup is there's no 4k option so this camera like sort of met both of those cameras in the middle and that's why I wanted to get this one six months after using this camera there are a few things I like about this camera there's a few things I don't like about this camera but I'm just gonna just talk about the things I'm just gonna talk about them both in any order first off the bat one thing I should point out about this camera this camera if you look closely this camera does not have a viewfinder now in my case a viewfinder is not a problem because you know it has this big large screen on the back that you can flip up um, so I don't need to look like that way you know to take a photo because I don't use this for photos at all this is pretty much a video camera it's not it's not really a point and shoot it's like a video camera because I've maybe taken just a few photos with it um, but yeah, there's no viewfinder. I really like how this screen pops out. Now, it's really good for vlogging. It's really good to vlog that way. But it's really nice to have the, the screen to pop out like this because you can catch some low shots. Like some low, like sort of vlog shots. Like you can have the camera really low and then you can still see from up top. So that way you can get just really good angles. The other thing I like about this camera it has an aperture ring. So when the lens is fully extended like this, you can change the aperture just controlling the dial like so. Like it's pretty cool. Like click, click, click. And it, it, it makes this like clicking sound. It sounds like really good in your hands. Um, and then there's also this like ring on the outside where you can zoom in so it has a zoom ring here and then it also has an aperture ring here there's two separate dials I really like this feature because on a lot of point and shoot cameras you just don't have this option on a camera like this size you know I really like this whole aperture ring here it's really really cool um, Another thing I should talk about this camera, the microphones are like right here, which is not so bad, like when I'm vlogging sometimes and it's really, really windy. And let's say the wind is coming from this direction, and if I have this screen up and I'm vlogging like this, the microphones are here, so the screen actually covers the microphone. On my microphones on top, I did not put dead cats. I know a lot of like YouTube vloggers, they put dead cats on top. I just, I just haven't did it. I think it looks a little weird on a point and shoot, but... Maybe I'll do it eventually because I, I, I guess it makes the audio a little bit better. Um, battery life. What about battery life on this thing? For the most part, I mainly use this for vlogging. Like, I make daily vlogs every day. If you haven't subscribed, you should definitely subscribe to my channel. You should get to know me. I make awesome videos. But anyway, I use this for daily vlogging. And nowadays, I don't really shoot that much B-roll like I used to. When I first got this camera, I was shooting B-roll like crazy. So the battery would last about... Maybe I would have to charge it every two days. Now I can get 
Gosh, I can go like three or four days without charging the battery. It, but it also really depends on what type of vlogging I'm doing. Like some days I may, you know, have a lot of 15 second scenes. So I'm turning the camera off and on over and over and over and over and over and over and over throughout the day. And some days I make videos. Some of my scenes are like one minute long or two minutes long or, and I cut the camera on and off fewer times in a day. So now let's move over to a few drawbacks. Now a few drawbacks with the battery life is when you're filming in 4K, the battery will die faster, but that's kind of standard on a lot of cameras. One thing I don't like about this camera, when you're vlogging in 4K, the video, it's cropped. It's cropped smaller than if you were vlogging in 1080p. I have no idea why they do this. It's kind of annoying. When I first got this camera, I made a few vlogs in 1080p, but I really did not want to make any vlogs in 1080p, but that was, uh, you know, kind of lame to figure out that, like, okay, I'm gonna hold the camera out this far and you know only this much of me is gonna be in the shot but if I have it on 1080p just a little bit more of me will be in the overall shot that was one thing I just really did not like about this camera I'm like that sucks like why why can't I have the same shot in 4k and 1080p now I really love the super crisp shots I can capture using this camera like this camera is like it, I mean, it, it, it's stunning. It takes awesome video. I really like the bokeh that this lens capture when I'm walking down the street and I'm vlogging in the city. A lot of times there's like people in, in the background and there's stuff in the background and I'm in focus and all of that, you can see it, but it's like out of focus and it just looks really, really cool. Now the size, now this camera is a little bit bigger than the Sony RX100 series and it's a little bit bigger than the the Canon G7X series. I mean, it's not that big. I mean, you can still stick it in your front pocket. I mean, I kind of wish it was a little bit smaller, but it also has one inch crop sensor. So that's gonna give you a lot of colors and that's gonna give you a really awesome shot. Now, one reason why I don't typically take photos with this camera, this is kind of bad. I should go ahead and tell you guys. When you're filming in 4K, you got so many pixels on there that you don't even need to take photos. You can get photos out of the video. A lot of my Instagram photos come from screenshots from 4K video that I've shot on this camera and not that I've, you know, taken the photo with this camera. It's I've shot with this camera in video to use the footage in a video and then I stop the video and then say, hey, I want to make a photo out of that. And Bam, like that, I've made a photo out of that. That's another benefit with owning an LX10. <laughs> you don't have to take photos as much. You can just video. Now back to this whole battery life thing. I'm not done with it, I'm not done with that. So if you ever have a problem with your battery and if it ever dies and you're out in the field, because it's definitely happened to me where I'm out, my LX10 starts to beep. Like right now, I got what, one bar on my LX10. I should probably charge it right now while I'm in the middle of making this video, but I need the camera in my hand right now. It does have a charging port on the side of the camera. This is the same Android charger that you would use with any Android phone. They make it really, really simple. You can have one of those power bank things in your backpack and you can just, you know, plug it up and charge up your LX10 and in about 30 minutes you'll have enough juice to make a video or take some photos or use your LX10 to look at some videos. Now let's talk about the main thing that I don't like about this camera. The main thing that just drives me insane. There's two things actually. The first one is not as important as the second one, but the first one is just really annoying. Oh my gosh, this is so annoying. When I cut this camera on, one, two, three, four, I have to wait four seconds before I can hit the record button. I have to wait four seconds. Now let's think about that. Is that a bad thing? That's a really bad thing. With my GoPro session, I have to wait four seconds before the camera cuts on. No big deal because there's no lens protruding out and all that. It just takes a camera a second to come on. But when I had my Sony HX80, oh my gosh, I would cut the camera on and like, bam. The lens popped out much faster than the lens on this camera. I mean, not that this camera, not that the lens... Not that this is a slow lens, but on the Sony HX80, I remember the lens, it was a whole lot faster than this. And also the zoom was a little bit better. Now with the zoom on this camera, you get decent zoom. You can zoom up to 72 millimeters and it's not bad. It's not bad. It's, uh, you get a nice steady shot when the camera is zoomed in because it doesn't zoom out that much, but you can definitely 
feel a lot of motors moving around when you start to shake this thing. And the second thing that annoys me the most with this camera, by far the most annoying thing, and it's, I don't know, I may be switching over the Sony, the Sony RX line very soon. The autofocus on this camera. The autofocus, now it's not the worst in the world, but compared to the, the previous Sony camera that I had, the HX80, the autofocus on that camera just blew this camera out of the water. Like it, it literally just blew it out of the water. Now that camera did not have a touch screen and it also did not have 4K capabilities, but the autofocus was just on point. On this camera, the autofocus is good, but it, it it's lagging big time. The Sony RX lineup is definitely got Lumex beat. Also the Canon G7X has definitely got the LX10 beat when it comes to autofocusing. I mean, I, that, that's pretty much all I got to say about the autofocus. And I mean, a lot of times it, it can be really good, but sometimes I'm just like out of focus. But sometimes I'm like vlogging and I'm like this and I'm out of focus here and all of this is in focus and all of this is in focus. And it's one of those scenes where like I just really can't recreate because a lot of times when I'm out vlogging, I'll film in the daytime and I don't look at the footage until, you know, later that night or the next morning. So I don't see the footage. So when I look at the footage and I'm like, dude, I'm so out of focus. Now, one thing about having the flip up screen, you can see yourself. But if you're vlogging like outside and you got like, you know, the sun in your face and you got a glare and you got cars driving by honking horns at you because I'm in the city and I'm always like on a bike and stuff and it's really busy. There's always a bunch of people walking down the street. There's always a bunch of cars driving by, always people yelling in the background and stuff. You're probably not gonna, you're probably gonna look at yourself in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the LCD and you're gonna see like, make sure you're in the middle. But if it's like bright and stuff, you're not really gonna see if you're like perfectly in focus, you know? Like, that's one thing I've, I've discovered, like with the, with the flip up screen, like in an environment like this, I could totally use a flip up screen because like I'm in, uh, I can see and I'm not wearing sunglasses and I don't have sun in my face. So I can see if I'm in focus. I can see if there's anything on my face. I can see like all of this stuff. But a lot of times you really can't see. And that's one thing I've noticed with the autofocus, it's like, Dude, I, I didn't even see that when I was vlogging. Like, how come I didn't see that when I was vlogging? It was because, I don't know, that's just how it is. Maybe I'm just so used to the, the HX80, the Sony HX80. Now, that was a pretty decent camera. That camera was about, I think that camera was like 350 when I bought it, and it was more than a year ago, and I think that camera was like still 350. So that, that one's still around. Now, the LX10 is more, it's a little bit pricier. This is uh, $700 or $699, as some people would call it, $700. I mean, it's the same thing if you ask me. Um, but yeah, it's a, I really like this camera. Now. But if I dropped this camera today and I broke it, would I go out and buy another one? I don't know. If I had to choose between the Sony RX lineup or the Canon G7X lineup, I would definitely have to go with the Sony lineup because Sony's got that on point autofocus. But one bad thing about Sony and the RX lineup is man, you can't film longer than five minutes in 4K because the entire camera heats up. Like, what's up with that? Like, otherwise I probably would have just bought a RX 100 a long time ago. In Canon on the other hand, it's like every major YouTuber uses the Canon 7D or the 70D or you know, the G7X. So I, I was like, dude, why would I buy a freaking Canon camera that doesn't shoot 4K and it's 2017 and they're still making cameras that don't shoot 4K. I mean, it's like Canon to me is like old school. You guys know how Sony was like 10 years ago? Like if you had a Sony TV, like Sony TVs were, were, were dope. Like, like it was Sony TVs, it was Sony phones, it was Sony everything. And then all of a sudden Samsung rolled around and like, Everyone who used to have a Sony TV back in the day, nowadays they got a Samsung TV. And that's how I kind of feel with like, with Sony and Canon. Like, I kind of feel like Canon has been around for a long time. They make a lot of awesome glass, don't get me wrong on that. With their cameras, they're holding back with the 4K for some reason. Like, if they would put 4K on their cameras, that would be really, really dope. But for some reason, there's no 4K Canon point and shoots. Lastly, so how has this camera held up? Not that many scratches, not that many bangs. Knock on wood, 
I haven't officially just straight up dropped it like on the ground. I haven't did that yet. So I'm really proud of myself. One thing I don't like about this camera, if you are watching this from Panasonic, this is very important. Pay close attention. You see this strap right here on the side of the camera? If I'm out vlogging, usually I have my hand through the camera just in case I drop the camera, okay? And I have the strap behind. If I ever hold the camera like this, and if it's windy outside just a little bit, this thing, this little metal, this little plastic thing on the tip, it's gonna bang and hit the camera. And when it bang and hit the camera, it's gonna pick up in the video. And it's gonna sound like horrible, okay? So Panasonic, if you're watching this, you can easily make this a whole lot better by making this part of the string a little bit longer so that this bottom plastic piece comes down here and that way it wouldn't hit the side of the camera so i don't know i i'm pretty sure people from panasonic probably won't even see this video you guys are probably selling so many cameras that you don't even care what people like me think but if you are watching this from panasonic or lumex is very important like um i don't know i guess this only affects vloggers for for most people they don't buy this camera for vlogging i imagine most people probably buy this camera to take photos with but I don't know too many like average Americans that would spend, you know, $700 on a freaking camera just to take photos with when you can get a pocket point and shoot camera for like two or 300 bucks that's, you know, okay for the average consumer or the average consumer could just use their iPhone 7. You know, iPhone 7 takes really good 4K. A lot of my time lapses I film with the iPhone 7 and I put that footage next to, you know, this camera and I'm like, dude, they look really good, like especially if it's really bright outside. A lot of my time lapses are filmed when it's really bright outside. And when I film it on this camera and I, you know, drop the footage into Final Cut and I'm putting it in between footage that I produced on this camera, I'm thinking like, man, it's not so bad. I don't know, I wonder who Panasonic really built this camera for because it's, it's kind of almost sort of like a vlogging camera for the most part. I don't know, maybe I'm just rambling too much. But yo, what do you guys think about the Lumex LX10? Are you thinking about buying one soon? Have you just bought one recently? Have you had one for a few months? Like, what, what do you like about it and what don't you like about this camera? Definitely let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys got to say about this camera. And if you guys got any tips or you guys got anything you want to share with me, um, or if you want to teach me how to use this camera even better, Hit your boy up in them comments. I can't wait for it. I can't wait to see them. But for now, I think I'm going to end this video. It's been a fun one. Thanks a lot for watching. If you're new to my channel, you guys got to subscribe. Like, I'm a daily vlogger. I travel randomly. I live out of a backpack. I make thousands and thousands of dollars a month. I'm not really materialistic. You need to get to know me. Yo, thanks a lot for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, yo.